To get around in Lagos and any other major city in Nigeria, you actually need to get in one of these. When you ask a typical Lagosian about the fastest means of transport, the person is more likely to respond with the word bike. Okada as it is popularly called first showed up in the country's commercial capital in the late 1990s. The two-wheeled bike got its name from Okada, a place in Benin City. From the 90s till now, this fast but sometimes dangerous two-wheel object has become an important feature on the roads in Lagos. And so, by the touch of your smartphone, you can have one waiting at your doorstep. Today, there are several bike hailing services in Nigeria, including MaxNG, Gokada, O-Ride, SafeBoda, Zoom, and Easy Mobility. But MaxNG took the lead by pioneering the biking innovation back in 2015. The business of running commercial motorcycles in major urban areas has expanded over time not only due to Nigeria's high unemployment rate, but because getting around a crowded major city like Lagos in cars or buses can be really exhausting. So, what is driving the growth of bike hailing services? Before now, you needed to save enough money or get a loan to acquire a bike if you wanted to be an Okada rider. But bike hailing services are changing the business model. Mobility is one of the biggest challenges in Nigeria. If you take a city like Lagos, over 20 million people, um, but not uh, sufficient infrastructure to make transportation and mobility very safe and very efficient. And for us, you know, we thought about it and said we can't always wait for the government or for foreigners or for the World Bank to come and fix our problems for us. At some point, we have to take responsibility. So. I, th I guess the motivation for us is that strong desire to build our own country, to create jobs and create opportunities and also create systems of support. From Max, we're bringing high quality, best quality to the mass market at affordable prices. OP is already across many cities in Nigeria. I mean, we have agents all across Nigeria. I mean, today we have a base of over 40,000 agents across Nigeria. Um, and. Um, so all right is just also on the on, on the rollout the rollout phase. We've done that in Lagos. We've already done that in Ibadan. We have two other cities that we be launching very soon. And for customers who loved to move on this form of transportation, they were subjected to waiting outside with the hope of sighting a rider, irrespective of the weather. They had to negotiate an agreed fare based on the distance of travel. Are you going Yano Solo? Yano Solo. Two hundred. How much last? But with bike hailing services, you get on your mobile phone, open your app, order a ride in your own comfort while viewing an estimated price based on your proposed destination. That's so cool, right? I prefer company bike. When you take a company bike, you will be more confident that you will get it, it, you will get your destination easily without getting any accident. Despite growing popularity, safety and ease of use, Will bike hailing platforms eventually become a threat to traditional Okada systems as we know it? Oh, I felt you are. Go on, they stop you are. Go on, I felt you are. Go on, they stop you are. Because I want to share that to go. I want to share the express. I will just the express. You know, switch that what is share. That is share you are. No, I felt us uh, in any way. Because one thing we noticed that go Okada didn't enter all the street by street here. Say what this time. So we are making our money easily. They didn't affect us in any way. Open. Those ones are in highway. They are running in, in major road. But we, we are moving here in local street, which government have said that we should be working inside the street, not in the major road. So Open, they are working on their own side, and we too, we are working on, 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 on our own side also. Meanwhile, it's not all zoom and good for the bike hailing startups, redefining the business as the Lagos state government has announced plans to bring them under focus and into the tax net. The government is proposing to introduce a new licensing policy. Under the proposed regulation, each startup will pay annual licensing fees of 25 million naira for its first registered 1,000 bikes and then 30,000 naira for each new bike after the first set of 1,000. Looking at uh, some of the proposals that have been made around um, an annual license fee of about uh, 25 million naira, I think, 
for motorcycle taxi companies in order to operate and then an additional fee it's not really clear um, of about 30,000 naira I'm not sure if it's per month or per, per year after 1,000 motorcycles I think um, obviously the government knows what what it's doing and um, it, it makes sense to regulate the industry uh, we also think it makes sense you know to put in some kind of licensing structure just to make sure that the kind of companies that are coming into this space are companies that are you know serious and committed to providing quality I think what is clear or what must be clear to everyone is that uh, getting into public transportation or into this Okada industry is not something you go into because you want to make profit tomorrow it is something that you do over the medium to long term so you have to be willing to make the investment uh, and I think uh, that is part of what is informing the government's decision to you know uh, try and put in some kind of licensing regime to make sure that the companies you know that are allowed to operate are companies who are committed to this industry long term and are willing to also put their money where their mouth is. Bike hailing companies have reportedly created jobs for at least 5,000 Nigerians within the last four years. If the policy is implemented, some of the bike hailing companies think it will hinder growth, while some operators believe it will set the right barrier to entry, making the market less crowded. While the debate rages on on whether licensing fee is needed or not, there is another battle confronting the bike hailing business, especially in Lagos. Over the past few months, riders have been hassled by local government and union agents to pay five times the original price of union dues. The challenges we face is about the guys, all those Aburo boys, they drag with us by paying ticket or nothing. That's the challenge we face for now. The challenges of Akbaros, that's area boys. Every day there are challenges us. If we carry a customers from here to like a Jolik bar or a far place, like if you go to Alaba Internationals, any side that like island we go, so we'll see them in the bus stops. There are collectings like uh, 1,000 or 1,500 for us every day. That's the challenges we face for these companies. The issue of ticket sales has forced many bike riders to boycott some locations in Lagos. Places like Surulere, Mushi, Egbeda, amongst other locations that have become no-go areas because of the harassment by urchins and union representatives. First, the thing about um, the, the unions and the riders and the challenges that we face, I mean, those challenges are real. Um, but we are responding to it. In fact, before we even began our, um, before we began the rollout of the service, we recognized that we needed to engage the various several stakeholders, which included the government and also even the unions. And we are constantly engaging them. Obviously, there, there needs to be a reorientation on, on, on things. Um, it's not an easy work, um, but we are constantly engaging them. I, I can't say fully what you understand we're doing, but we're actually engaging them. We have a series of meetings with them, we, and we believe that we'll be able to work out um, something that will be beneficial to all stakeholders. Despite the risk, rising competition, road taxes among others, it appears commercial motorcycle transportation has come to stay. As long as the roads remain jammed with four-wheel vehicles and a growing population needing to get around quick and easy, there is no stopping how far this can go. While it is true that the bike hailing startups are solving a huge transportation problem with technology, how will the current challenges and the future ones impact on their sustainability? How will riders under the new system be monitored and regulated? What effect will it have on local Okada riders? Only time will tell. For now, whichever you choose to hop on, the traditional Okada or the cool bike hailing options, make sure you have a jolly good safe ride. Share your thoughts, leave your comments on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube at Guardian Nigeria.